Juana Dominica from Brooklyn Cooking. I don't know what day you're going to watch this, but it's Sunday morning here in Brooklyn. Today we're going to make chicken pot pie. And as Herbert Hoover said, we're going to put a chicken in every pot. We're going to put some chicken in every pot pie. Chicken pot pie requires pie crust. So we're going to make it from scratch. Uh, if you don't want to do this, you can just buy a good pie crust. Pillsbury is very good and save yourself some work, but there's no uh, no teaching in that, so we're going to try to do it from scratch today. There's basically two ingredients in pie crust. Flour and fat, either in terms of butter or vegetable shortening the old way Crisco or good old-fashioned American lard. To make a double pie crust, it's two and a half cups of flour to about a cup of fat. Uh, we don't want to go all butter, so we're going to go about half butter and half lard, and we'll get into the ingredients when we put it together. I'm not a big fan of uh, vegetable shortening. I actually think lard is more healthier than that, but to each their own. Almost all baking recipes call to use unsalted butter. This is salted butter. I use, I'm using unsalted today. I just wanted to make a point. Uh, this recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt, which is about 2,300 milligrams of salt. Butter, for a tablespoon of butter, if you look at it, there's only 100 milligrams of salt in a tablespoon of butter. We're only using six of them today, so that's only 600 of the 2,300. You can get away with salted butter. Just use a little less salt or not even. It'll be, you know, not going to be bad. So we're going to clear the table and start putting this together. Okay, we're ready to go. We have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You want a good all-purpose flour. I like using King Arthur. To that, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. You just want to aerate this out a little bit. And then comes the fun part. We're going to add our fat, which is about a cup uh, mixed between uh, butter and lard. Then we're going to take a pastry cutter. We don't want to use our hands in this. The main thing is with pie crust is you want everything cold. You want to you want to blend this in until it basically like Rice Krispies. If you don't have a pastry cutter, you could do it with two forks. You're making a dough that you want the butter to be able to see see pieces of butter because that's what that's what will give you. A flaky pie crust. So we're going to keep working this. All right, we're about ready here. We did this for a few minutes. I don't know, maybe five. Depends how hot or your butter is, but you want everything cold. You see the clumps in there, maybe a Rice crispy consistency, and then we need liquid. So liquid's going to come in, in about half a cup of ice cold water. I'm substituting a quarter of a cup of the water with some vodka, they say it makes it tender. I'm going to put some in to start, and then we got to get this out on the counter. Nice and easy. Now we got to go to the hands, but nice and gently. I want to keep this together. We'll need some more water. We're going to add a tablespoon at a time, just work it in so we get a nice, decent ball. See the little pieces of butter that's in there? That's what's going to give you a flaky pie crust. You can get a bench scraper to help you out, put this together a little better. But basically, we're just making a rough ball. All right, this is looking pretty good. Uh, like I say, there's no sugar in this pie crust. Of course, chicken pot pie is a savory dish, so we don't want sugar in that. But even if I'm making uh, a sweet dish like apple pie, whatever, this will be the pie crust I go with. I don't like adding sugar to it. That's just me. Uh, anyway, this is going to become two pie crusts, so it's a lot easier to divide it now than later. It'll be easier to roll out, so we're going to make one and two. We got, our, we got our two pie crusts. We're going to wrap these up in plastic wrap and leave them in the refrigerator for two, at least two hours, and you'll see what a difference they are when they come out. Yeah, I made one a little bigger than the other because one's going to be the bottom 
bottom's going to need, need a little more uh, dough than the top because it comes up the sides. And I don't know, when I get chicken pot pie, when I don't, if I don't have a bottom crust, I feel cheated. So we'll wrap these up and we'll be back. All right. In the meantime, a little before these are ready to come out of the refrigerator, whenever you're ready to do it, you're going to make your chicken pot pie filling. Okay, here comes the fun part. Separates the men from the boys, or the Italian grandmas from me. Try to start from the middle and roll your way out. See those little specks of butter in there? That's what we're looking for. I'm rolling it out on some plastic wrap. So hopefully it'll make it easier for me to pick it up and get it into the pie crust. Well, it's rolling out pretty good. Okay, now it's, we'll give a little measurement to our pan. That's not too bad. It's got to come up the sides. And I lightly, lightly buttered the, the pan to get a good exit. We're going to hope and pray this picks up and goes in there. This is my weakness. Not too bad. A little trick I learned from my wife. Baby, sometimes I surprise myself. We'll get it into the sides. See how you can grab a piece here, stick it there. Nobody's going to know. See where you can see specks of butter in there? That's what we want. That's what we hope is going to give us a nice flaky pie crust. Okay, we're ready to go. Most recipes, a lot don't, don't even put potatoes in them. I like potatoes in them. And when they do put potatoes in them, they boil them. I like to add a little flavor and, and pan roast them. We have a third of a cup of butter because eventually we got to make a roux here. We got to thicken it up so there's going to be flour that goes in there. I have here one decent sized carrot chopped up, a uh, stalk of celery, and a small onion. You know, a little rough chop on the onion. I don't want them too fine. Cook the vegetables down for five, seven minutes until uh, they're pretty soft. The things are not going to, you know, vegetables and the chicken, they're not going to cook in the oven on the chicken pot pie. So you want them pretty much softened and whatever, you know, before you put them in the filling. Hey, the potatoes are about ready. We're, gonna, we're going to get these out of the pot, drain them a little bit. Still need a little more time on the vegetables. Might as well not dirty another pan. We'll get the the chicken going. This is uh, this is just like my theory on uh, potatoes. You can boil your chicken, or you can roast. You can grill it a little bit, give it a little more flavor. Put raw chicken in in the pot pie. It's, Chicken will not cook in the oven in the pie, so you need to get it going a little bit. Always a little salt, a little pepper. The vegetables are just about done. We'll add a little garlic, maybe a clove of garlic. Notice I'm using a lot bigger pot than it looks like I need with this, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to go in there at the end, including chicken stock and some half and half and the chicken and all the the potatoes so you want room you don't have to kick the cook the chicken through and through you just want to get it going it will cook more it's going to bake for 45 minutes or so but want it mostly cooked we'll shut that off this looks good we'll shut this off for a minute and then we'll get the flour and the rest of the stuff and finish this up vegetables that are ready now we need to make a roux so we started with a third of a cup of butter. So we are going to add a third of a cup of flour. A roux is basically equal parts of flour to, to fat. I'm going to cook this down a little bit. Cook the, cook the raw flour taste out of it. Don't this look scrumptious, but it will get better. The longer you cook the flour, the less thickening power it has. But we need to need to cut need to cook that raw taste out of the flour okay, might as well add our chicken 
and potatoes. Then we'll add our chicken broth. We got here, I don't know, almost two cups, cup and three quarters. We want to bring this to a boil. I want to add a couple other things. A little dry thyme. I like to kick it up a drop with a little cayenne pepper. Now we want to add some half and half. We have about, I don't know, two thirds of a cup or so. Don't be too crazy with ingredients. You add what you like. You don't add what you don't like. And that looks good to me. And now the moment of truth. Let's see how this gets in there. See if we have a perfect recipe. And remember, the Brooklyn cooking definition of a perfect recipe is not if it's good or bad, but if you fill the pan pretty good. So it could be terrible, but right now, in my opinion, this is a perfect recipe. And now we're going to even it out. And like I say, this is pretty much perfect recipe. It fit in the pan, which is always a good thing. Now we're going to do pie crust number two. Remember what I said earlier? If I go to and get chicken pot pie and there's no bottom, I feel cheated. But now we got to do the top, so we got to put this aside. Okay, we have the top now. Uh, remember, keep it cold. So while you're doing the bottom, keep the top in the refrigerator. And we're just going to repeat. No sense showing this whole thing. Okay, the top is rolled out. Gently, gently, gently. And I think we have a touchdown. Now we're going to cut a couple of pieces off. We're going to need this for something special. Now we're going to crimp this, and I'm, I'm not that great at this, but we'll do what we can. I have no idea if that's good or bad. It's good enough for me, though. Okay, there was one small addition I had to do before we plop it in the oven, and that is to put our giant NY on the chicken pot pie. Little story on chicken pot pie and the Giants. The last year the Giants won the Super Bowl, which seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, when they weren't doing too good, we, we tailgate. And one tailgate party, I brought a chicken pot pie to the tailgate. And they won. So I said, being superstitious, next game, how to do it again. And they won. And the Giants kept winning, and I kept making chicken pot pies. And we decided we were going to take a ride out to Indianapolis and watch the Super Bowl, them playing the New, New England Patriots. And we did that. So I said, you know, we got to bring a chicken pot pie with us. So I made one in Brooklyn, hauled it off to Indianapolis. We rented a house and we heated it up in the oven the night before and we ate it and they won the Super Bowl. Hasn't worked since, but we'll see how it goes. We could do an interlocking NY for the Yankees, but... Ain't nothing helping them. They're horrible right now. Anyway, you want to give this a little egg wash. You know, brown it up a little. Besides the egg wash, we want a little explosion insurance. We'll cut a couple of tiny little air pockets in here. And that's all she wrote. We'll throw it in a 425 degree oven and we'll cook it till it's golden brown and delicious. Now, I have a uh, sheet pan there. We're going to put it on the sheet pan to so we don't screw up the oven altogether. And we'll be back in 40 minutes. Okay, it's soup, or I would say chicken pot pa pie. I must admit, it looks beautiful. How would taste? I don't know. I think it would taste pretty good. Anyway, we're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes to let it settle down a little. Uh, one thing I should have done, you see this is a lot browner than the back. I should have gave it a little turn in the oven, but I forgot, but no big deal. I think it will be fine. Okay, that was the longest 15 minutes in history. So we're ready to cut. Mmm, baby. Very hot still, and we'll give it a quick taste. Mm. 
delicious. Anyway, not that hard. We started out with Buongiorno this morning. We're now at Buonasera, and pretty soon it's going to be Buonanotte. You can make this as easy or as detailed as you like. You can make your own pie crust. It wasn't that hard. You can buy a pie crust. You can grill your chicken. You can buy a rotisserie chicken. You can make this very easy or work a little harder. Even though uh, it's now almost nighttime, it really didn't take that long because the pie crust sat in the refrigerator for a couple hours. Got to stay anywhere from two hours to a few days. So that was it. If you want to do a calorie count on the pie crust, pie crust had a cup of butter and that's about uh, 1,600 calories right there. Each tablespoon of butter is 100 calories. And if I looked at the Betty Crocker thing, the two pie crusts were 1,600 calories. So same thing. You're not eating that much of it. You're not doing this that often. And butter is good for you, especially if you use that good grass-fed butter. Anyway, Rivadachi from Brooklyn Cooking, and we'll see you next time.